Well, this is a bit of a sad video, I'm afraid, and it's about Onto. Onto, if you didn't know, is a car subscription service, an EV subscription service in the UK. And they offered a range of EVs and you could have the car for as little as one month or as long as you wanted. And for that, you get everything included, servicing, insurance and uh, charging if you pay a bit more as well. It was a really good service and we've been using Onto for a few years and we've had five or six cars with them. And in fact, the car I'm sat in right now is also from Onto. Some people would say that Onto were quite expensive. I got this comment a lot on my videos saying, my God, it costs a lot of money. And I've always argued actually that it was not too bad, really. If you stacked Onto up against leasing, then leasing would be cheaper, but only if you did it over a long period of time and you put down a large deposit. The whole point of Onto was that you didn't need that large deposit and you didn't have to be locked in for years in a car that you might not like that much, actually. So I always loved the idea of subscriptions. It, um, it's just, I mean, it really suited us also because I do the YouTube stuff. So we've been able to film a few cars, which is nice that we wouldn't ordinarily have got our hands on. But it's just nice, I think, just trying different cars and um, having the charging included was fantastic. And of course, my latest road trip to Italy and back was in a Peugeot E208 from Onto. And having charging included just made that a dream, really. So I kind of prioritise the uh, charges that I can get with this, which is actually most of them, really. Most of them in Europe, anyway. So it's upsetting news because, and you may have read this already, Onto have gone into administration, which means pretty much that's the end of Onto, unfortunately. So I'm going to talk about why this may have happened what's going to happen in the future and what's going to happen with the car that I'm sat in right now. So back in July, the large financial company called Legal and General, who had already pumped in loads and loads of money into one, two, decided they weren't going to pump in any more money. And this was after already putting in £22.5 million a few weeks before this announcement. In total, Onto had had 350 million dollars worth of funding it was quite a big deal really i mean it was quite a, quite a unique company doing car subscriptions ev subscriptions so they were able to get a lot of money and legal in general one of the biggest um, companies that were funding them this obviously left onto a bit stuck they needed the extra money to continue operations and they couldn't get it so this left them looking for a buyer so since they haven't got the required funding onto have now entered administration so Sadly, that means that this is probably the beginning of the end for Onto. But there were some clues that something wasn't quite right. If you went onto Onto's website, and unfortunately, because of course I, I always talk about Onto, I always put up my referral code and everything. But I got a couple of people saying they cut, there are no cars available. And sure enough, I looked and it said no cars available. And when I wanted to swap the E208 for the car that I'm sat in now, there was only this one and an Audi e-tron, I think available where it always used to be loads and loads of them i've also heard that loads of onto cars are appearing at auction and have been appearing at auction in the past few weeks especially so they are trying to clear out their fleet so why did this happen now i'm no expert by the way i would love to hear in your comments if you know any more if you've got more inside information but if you look on auto trader auto trader is a very big website for used cars go to auto trader and you look at used evs and you'll notice that they are extremely good value now. They're very, very cheap compared to what they used to be. It used to be the case, and I even said this probably only just two years ago, that if you got an EV, if you bought a new EV, it was relatively safe. I mean, they didn't depreciate too much. And in fact, my Ionic 5, when I sold that, I actually made a profit on it. So that was quite a good financial decision, um, I suppose, even though I missed the car daily but anyway that was probably the high point of the market and now since then it has died there are a few reasons for this firstly obviously covid happened there was massive uh, a massive constraint of cars you couldn't you just couldn't get them because of uh, component supply so that kind of kept the prices artificially high that meant that there weren't many cars available if you wanted an ev there weren't enough available so that kept the prices high lockdowns all stopped supply of components has improved and that of course has meant that now factories are being able they're able to churn out far more evs um, and the problem is that now we have a glut we have an oversupply of evs in some case some companies volkswagen have been complaining about this if you wanted an ev you had to wait a year 18 months and then 
everything started improving and then you could get EVs much quicker. However, the interest rates very high. Obviously, it's more expensive to finance a car and also it meant that people don't have as much money to play with now. Then, just to make matters worse, Tesla reduced their prices by £7,000 overnight. You could get a Model 3 for £38,790 in March. So there's the Tesla effect. And then you've got a deliberate effort in the media to trash EVs at every opportunity. And it's it's hilarious and tragic at the same time. I mean, almost every day there's a story in the usual. It's always the usual suspects. It's always the Mail, the Express, the Telegraph in the UK that trash EVs on a daily basis. I don't know whether this is paid for by big oil. If I was wearing a conspiracy theorist hat, then perhaps I would think that big oil are paying money or it's just clickbait. I mean, that's probably more likely. Every article that is about EVs, EVs are a hot topic. Every article that's about EVs will get clicked on. They're too heavy. Parking garages are collapsing. They don't mention everyone's obsession with buying massive SUVs like Land Rovers, which are two and a half tons. The Tesla Model 3 is lighter than a BMW 3 Series. They're always on fire. EVs are statistically much less likely to catch on fire. They're less environmentally friendly because they're so carbon intensive to build. The latest research says that the break-even point for EVs is about 25,000 miles, after which point it's much more environmentally friendly than an ICE car. And of course, EVs get more environmentally friendly the longer you drive them because the grid gets better. Batteries are full of cobalt dug up by poor African children. They conveniently skip out the point where cobalt is used to refine petroleum. So if you're driving an ICE car, you're burning cobalt. And also cobalt is used in pretty much every other lithium battery from vapes to iPhones to tablets, laptops, everything, you name it, it's got cobalt in it. And the difference is that cobalt that is used in EV batteries is recyclable. And of course, new EVs like Tesla Model 3, MG and things, they have LFP batteries. LFP batteries contain zero cobalt. The latest one, which is hilarious, is that men don't want to buy EVs because it will make them less masculine. No, it's true, actually. So producing toxic fumes does put hair on your chest. So it's almost like there's an anti-EV article every day. It's ridiculous. And they get the clicks. They get the clicks from people like me that would be like, my God, that what rubbish are they talking now? Um, or they'll get clicks from people who already don't like the idea of EVs and they're just, you know, it's confirmation bias. They'll see the article, click on it, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, that's right. EVs are shit. So anyway, all this considered, it was a perfect storm. So going back to one two, that's what tanked it. Onto's value is based on the cars they have in their fleet. The used prices dropped, so that left Onto in a situation where they've lost millions. By the way, it's worth mentioning that depreciation has always been bad on cars. I mean, it's always been a thing that the moment you drive it off the forecourt, it's lost a couple of grand in value. It's always been the case. And EVs have always been a little more immune to it, but now it's just the case where they're just as bad as a normal ice car, really, in terms of depreciation. Maybe a little, a little improve, it might improve as time goes on, but it might be that we've just, we've, we've seen the days when EVs held their value and now they're just like any other car. So what happens now? I mean, they sent an email out, okay? They would kind of say it's business as usual in that they're still taking the fees, so you can still have your on-to car, but who knows how long that's gonna last. The administrators will but they're obviously going through the financials, they're working out a plan. I imagine there will it will come to a point where they just say they want to collect the car. And I I don't know whether I don't know whether it makes any sense to keep a car beyond the end of the this month that you've already paid. I would be a little bit worried, I think, that they might decide they want to take the car from you halfway through a, your monthly term and then Potentially, you're potentially not going to get any money back. I don't know. In the email that Onto sent, they said that if you were interested in buying the car you have, then fill in a little form. So I've actually done that just for this car I'm in now, just to see, just out of curiosity, see how much they would sell it for. If there's nothing wrong with the car, if you have no issues at all, then I think you'll be fine. But I would consider um, other options, and um, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, if you do have a problem with your car, I don't fancy your chances very much, unfortunately. I mean, on to, they've, they've, they're, they're still, they say they've still got a support line and everything, but 
I imagine they're fielding a lot of angry calls at the moment and um, it must be pretty miserable there and I really feel for all the staff onto. Is the whole idea of an EV subscription dead? Well, there is a company called Elmo. They're still doing their thing. A company called Lease Plan, a leasing company, they've literally just emailed just today to say that they're now offering 28 days leases. So I still love the concept of car subscriptions. There are companies, well, in fact, there are a lot of car companies now, like Volvo, for instance, and uh, Hyundai that are doing subscriptions. Um, but I just liked it with Onto because, you know, you just can swap it. You could swap between different brands. I really liked that. If you've really gone off the whole idea of subscriptions, then if you look at the fine, if you look at financing a used EV, you will probably find that that's your best bet. I reckon right now. I think you'll probably you'll probably get that cheaper than your monthly payment to Onto would be. So have a look at that. And as I say, there are some fantastic EVs, some fantastic long range EVs like the Nero, like the Kona, um, even Model Threes. You can get relatively cheap now used. If you had, if you were to have like a budget of twenty grand, for instance, like that, if you would, if you could possibly finance that, then you've got a massive selection on Auto Trader. So do look at that. So what about our car? Well, the car I'm sat in, I'm not going to tell you what it is. See if you can guess based on the seats. But um, I need, I need to produce some videos about it. But I've been desperately trying to finish the E208 road trip videos before I even mentioned this one, um, because my videos are always out of sync. And I just thought for once I'll try and do them in order. At the end of this term, which will be in, at the time I'm recording this, which will be another week and a half or something like that, then Onto will collect it. And um, that will be unfortunately the end of our time with Onto, unless someone magically comes and saves them. So in terms of what we're going to do next, we've at the moment, we've just got a Nissan Leaf, that's our only car. So we, we will do something. I think we probably will do what I just said, and we will buy a used EV. So um, stay tuned for that to find out what we get and how we get it. Anyone who's watched this channel in the past knows that I've loved onto. And if you've used my referral code in the past, thank you so much. If you use my code and you still have a car with onto, I really hope it goes well for you. I'm still hopeful a company might come along and save them. Octopus, um, Octopus Energy um, is kind of my number one choice, I suppose. But given that onto are doing a fire sale and getting rid of all of their fleet, then I suppose there isn't much left um, to get other than the technology, I suppose. Um, Octopus, they do leasing already, so they could offer subscriptions. I did message the CEO of Octopus and I haven't heard back yet. I'm sure a few people have probably said, why, why not get on to? But um, I think probably not much chance of that happening, sadly. So I just want to finish by saying thank you to on to they've been really great and i'm very sad to see them go so thank you very much for watching this video please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos and um, more upbeat videos hopefully thank you very much and bye for now